The Improvement Board that have been so useful in guiding us through the journey because it's been a long, hard journey. Um, I'd like to, to thank the Scrutiny Committee for um, all their help as well. But the people you need me in Franklin are the staff. The staff of this organisation have got to be the best staff. It, it, not in the country, you know, not in the North West, maybe in the country. And the commitment to turn this service around has been second to absolutely second to know. Um, I think the biggest achievement is moving everybody into Cheshire Lines because now everybody works together and instead of having like almost silos of people doing the same job, they're all helping each other, they're all working together. We've got 50%, 50% less agency staff now, which is the answer to Paul's question, which has made a massive difference. We have our top management staff now, the whole team of permanent staff. Permanent staff who are dedicated to Wirral and dedicated to the children of Wirral. That's something that we didn't have before. And that's all to do with the commitment that the people in this chamber has made. Sometimes I think, I sit here sometimes and watch what's going on in the chamber and shake my head and think, what? God's name are we all doing here? But there are times when we really, really do make a difference and I think with children's services we really have made a difference. Um, we now have a much, much, much improved service. Um, and I think when we go for our re-inspection, which will be, I think it'll be early May. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not going to be here to see it, but it'll be early May. And I think we'll have um, a much, much better outcome in May. And it's, it's a service that's going to need improvement, not just this year. And just because we come out of um, intervention, it doesn't mean that it stops. It has to continue. It has to continue. I asked for a list of some of the achievements that we've sort of made over the past couple of years, and I've got a list of 35 things here. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to read all 35, but there's a few of them I think that's really, really, for me, really good. So the Agreed Apprenticeship Programme for Needs of the World Growth Company. So people coming through were a massive and guaranteed apprenticeships. Gosh, that's marvellous, that is. Lifelong learning services have been, have been um, judged by Ofsted to be good. Our lifelong learning services are services for people from 14 to 19 who have always slipped through the net, who have been forgotten because they don't come under any other services. We've got a good investment there and um, we're working very closely now with Liverpool because Liverpool have looked over here and thought, what they're doing on the world is absolutely exceptional. They're making a difference to Leeds lives. So they're, they're coming over here and working with us. Um, the Seacombe Children's Centre, obviously, the Birthing Centre at Seacombe is absolutely marvellous. And we've been put forward for, we've been nominated for an Innovation of Children's Services Award, a national award for that. And um, last week we went down for the LGA and we were nominated for an award for our apprenticeship programme for looked after children. And once again, we've got councils coming from all over the country to have a look at that because it's been seen as being instrumental in, in, in changing people's lives. Um, I think when we look at it as well, the, the achievement of kids in schools, um, we've got more of our looked after children going to university. We've got more of our looked after ch children reaching their potential in school. Our early childhood services have been successful in a partnership with Warrington and Cheshire East um, to develop speech, language and communication pathways to support the council with this, uh, and they're working with disabled children and the communications trust. So that's marvellous. And we've launched um, a, a, a thing that's called Be The Difference campaign which seeks to inspire and recognise practitioners, volunteers and support staff to go just over and beyond um, and go the extra mile to make sure that we improve children's lives. To say I could stand here for a long time and tell you what we've achieved. None of this would have been possible without the commitment from the new lot, the commitment from the improvement board, from the safeguarding board, um, from our staff. Um, and I just thank you for all the support you've given to me for the past eight years. And, um, and thank you on behalf of the children of, of Wirral as well. Um, they're in a much better place now than they were two years ago. So my legs are starting to shake now, so I'm going to sit down. Thank you very much.
some women. Any further questions? No further questions. So we now move on to item seven, members' questions. Members' general questions. Two questions have been received. Councillor Stuart Kelly to Councillor Phil Brighthorn, Councillor Phil Gilchrist to Councillor Stuart Whittingham. So the first question, Councillor Stuart Kelly to Councillor Phil Brighthorn. Councillor Kelly, do you wish to ask your question? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Mayor. Question to Phil Brighthorn. Uh, is the cabinet member aware of the 2017 playing pitch strategy? Can I refer him to the comments within the strategy regarding the Glen and Solly recreation grounds in Oxford Rock? You will have noted that the strategy looks to, and I quote, explore funding op options for the provision of changing rooms, toilets, etc. to service Solly Rec and the Glen. You will have also heard that the fields are currently used by Glen Avon Junior Football Club. Glen Avon used to play, that's unsurprisingly, Glen Avon playing fields. You will be aware of the recent theft of sports equipment and kits from Glen Avon's FC storage uh, facility uh, at the Glen. Glenavon playing fields were recently given planning permission for houses. However, the chance of requiring the developer to contribute to, and I quote again from the strategy, replacement provision of an equivalent or better quality in a suitable location, as was suggested in the playing pitch strategy, but unfortunately missed. You also also to be aware, however, that the Glenavon playing field use was protected by a covenant from which the council has accepted a payment to release the developer from the terms of the covenant. Can I ask if the cabinet member would look at applying the proceeds of this payment to meet the aims of the playing pitch strategy in the Oxford and in the Oxford and Fenton area to the benefit of the kids? supported by Glenavon JFC. Will he also agree to meet with representatives of Glenavon to discuss what help can be given to improve the playing pitches in that area? Councillor Phil Brightmore. Thank you for your question, Councillor Kelly. Um, payments are not usually allocated in that way. However, you did mention the playing pitch strategy. An officer has been working the Football Association in the production of a local football facility plan for Wirral, which will enable investment in football facilities. The plan is still in its infancy, and officers only recently met representatives of the FA and Football Foundation to receive the plan and understand what might need for development opportunities across the world. However, I can assure you any action plan that involves development of the World Council assets will be subject to member support and approval. I've spoken to officers about the Glenavon Junior Football Club and I've been briefed on the recent theft from the storage units on the Glen. I understand that it was a highly organised and planned theft, which will directly impact on the junior members of Glenavon. I'm also advised that Glenavon currently run over 30 junior football teams a week and that the Cheshire FA are fully aware of their development need in terms of the LFFP. I'd be more than happy to meet with representatives of the club and relevant council officers once the LFFP World Action Plan has been approved by the members. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Second question is Councillor Bill Gilchrist to Councillor Stuart Whitting. And Councillor Gilchrist, do you wish to ask your question? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A council on the 15th of October 2018, I asked about the faults of lighting on the A41 at Port Causeway. Apparently, it's still not resolved. And whether surveys are still carried out to scout or check on street lights that are out. The council now has a new standard acknowledgement that says your inquiry should be attended to within the next 12 working days, and most are repaired. However, a small percentage cannot be repaired straight away due to more complex issues. When repairs cannot be carried out, I would ask for your understanding while we endeavour to address these issues as quickly as possible because it can take a number of weeks to resolve. My constituents can point to lights that have been out for far longer than that. What is the cabinet member promising to do about those that have been off for ages? Councillor Whitting, your response? Thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you, Councillor Goodwood, for your 
different questions on you submitted. Okay. <laughs>